Hi, in a previous video, number 996 to be precise, which I'll link in down below and up there somewhere, and at the end of this video if you haven't seen it, I talked about the CE mark and various other marks like this uh, garbage bin and the ROS compliance mark and other sort of uh, certification marks that were on products. So if you haven't seen that, link it in down below. But I pr in that video, I actually promised to uh, look at some more logos that we you see on the back of products. So you often find these sorts of logos on anything that uh, pretty much involves safety, like uh, these power plug packs, for example. Look, they're absolutely filled with logos and heck, and even my own multimeter has one of these type approval logos on it, ETL. What do all these things mean? And uh, we're going to specifically take a look at the UL one, but not only that, there's other ones like this, you know, CCC, what does that mean? TUV, the ETL Intertech mark I just showed on the multimeter. NOM, what's that? Um, there's a whole bunch of what are called type approval marks, so let's take a look at them the UL logo or the Underwriters Laboratory logo that you'll find on uh, products. What does this actually mean? Underwriters Laboratory or UL are a certifying, uh, an American certifying agency that uh, test and certify that products meet a particular standard and UL uh, there's various UL standards which they even might write themselves or they get from other uh, parties and modify the standards themselves and there's a whole bunch of these and I'll link these in down below if you want to actually go into their standards catalog and this is standard for practically everything fire tests of window assemblies tin clad fire doors I don't know there's 62 pages method for the test the spread of fire and uh, geez we're st just on fire anyway the ones we're uh, specifically con more concerned about on this channel of course is electrical uh, safety and of course plug packs things like uh, multimeters like this so safety is a really big thing in products and there may be a legal requirement in a certain country to have something type approved and actually have it uh, either UL or some of the other logos we looked at have things type approved before they're allowed for sale in the country but that's not always the case for example you can import and sell a two dollar multimeter which this one is not you can import and sell a multimeter no problems whatsoever and it has no UL logo on it at all um, it it may or may not meet the safety requirements but what having this UL logo on the back of a product means is that it has been independently third-party tested by the underwriters laboratory and certified to meet whatever particular standard that you're testing against for sale in whichever country and then if it meets that standard they'll publish a report which we'll take a look at and then the manufacturer gets to put on uh, whichever logo you've got here and you'll see all these different types of uh, logos you might see uh, one with uh, it's got a C and a US next to it that uh, implies that it's um, a standard uh, applies to both Canada and the US but there's various other like, like there's just no end to the variations of this logo so but generally UL just means underwriters laboratory third party certified and tested safety and yes there could actually be fake products uh, that have the UL logo on it that were not independently certified and tested so any reputable manufacturer will actually upon request uh, will provide the UL uh, test certificate often on their website or something like that you can download it the full or partial uh, uh, certificate from the UL certifying that that company has actually had this uh, test done but there are fake ripoff products out there that simply slap these logos on and well you know that's almost impossible to stop but you know that's what happens when you buy a two dollar charger from China but the good news is, is that these uh, type approval uh, agencies will actually go after companies who uh, misrepresent and uh, their logo or um, sell fake or imported uh, products like that that contain their logo. They're very strict on that. So yeah, you don't want to be going slapping on a UL logo on a product if you haven't actually had it tested by them. They'll kick your ass. And because this is the EV blog, you may be interested in multimeter uh, UL certification, for example. Well, uh, this is the uh, UL 61010 standard, which uh, relates to the CAT uh, input ratings, for example, of, of multimeters and the electrical safety of multimeters uh, like this. And this actually comes from the IEC uh, 61010 standard, and UL uh, might have either slightly modified or just uh, copied that uh, directly from another particular 
particular standard. And you might have actually seen this weird one, which looks like a back to front R and a U. This is actually uh, to do with Underwriters Laboratory as well. And you might see these on, there it is, on a hard drive there, for example. And um, generally you won't find these on the back of a finished consumer product and this is what's called a recognized uh, component mark that goes onto things like this hard drive which is actually a computer component which goes inside a finished computer which then might have the UL logo on it for, for example and that just certifies that that particular component inside the system meets a particular standard by the uh, underwriters laboratory they just use a different mark for that so you might find those on a full like it's like subsection component like this hard drive or you might find it on a uh, PCB for example and once again the C and the US mark there designates uh, Canada and or the US so that just uh, signifies that the manufacturer has paid to have that particular component or subsection tested uh, for some sort of standard or certification by the underwriters laboratory. In the case of say an internal uh, power supply, just the blank, you know, the power supply PCB inside a uh, computer, for example, that might have this uh, RU mark on it, which means that they actually had that just that power supply subsection independently tested. And of course there'd be advantages to doing that if all your individual uh, critical, say, safety subcomponents are all individually certified, then it makes the top level UL certification to put that UL logo on the back much easier when it comes to certification time. So although the UL mark is hugely uh, encompassing, you can just think of it as a third party independent safety certification standard. Take for example the uh, 61010, uh, one here let's look at all the different they're the different standards available for the set there's 17 different standards under the 61010 things like that that's just one subset of one standard <laughs> crazy but it's quite often that you'll uh, see on the final product uh, not just the UL logo but underneath you might find uh, the particular standard uh, that it actually meets but that's not strictly a requirement. You could have that somewhere else in uh, your documentation. But UL isn't the only game in town. They're just one uh, independent company who happened to do these safety uh, certification things. Uh, take, for example, the EEV blog multimeter. There it is. It's got this ETL on it. What does that mean? Well, that is just yet another um, reputable third party independent. Uh, test organization that certifies and tests in this case to exactly the same IEC 61010 standard as the UL do but it's just another company uh, doing it you might use them because uh, they might be cheaper or because they might have you know like a better service they might have a faster turnaround time it doesn't matter they're both uh, reputable and the ETL logo in this particular case means it's been uh, certified um, to exactly the same standard but certified by Intertech uh, which is a company and look at it, these are once Again, all the different uh, consumer, food and health, energy, commodities, chemicals, construction, engineering, they'll certify almost anything, just like UL. It's exactly the same thing. You generally wouldn't have your product both UL and ETL tested because in the case of this multimeter, it's got the same C and US next to it, Canada and the US. So uh, you wouldn't really um, bother getting it both UL tested and Intertech ETL tested for the two same countries. There's just really no point. So just like the uh, UL logo, the ETL Intertech logo is just yet another way to uh, show to your customer that your product has been independently safety and certified tested. And uh, as with uh, the UL and Intertech, you can actually uh, search their databases to actually see if the product and that company has legitimately had it tested by them. When you pay your money to have this uh, tested and certified by UL or ETL or some other um, type approval agency, you get a pretty comprehensive report. This is uh, my one, for example, or, or one of them um, for the 121GW multimeter, and they take all these uh, photos, very typical sort of like certification UL type uh, testing photos. They're marking out all the uh, critical uh, safety components and how they're all individually tested. And here's the interesting thing. See how it's got 
spelt uh, C-R-U-R-S. Uh, we talked about that before. That's that uh, component uh, conformity mark. So that, that's why mark of conformity for each ind the individual component. So the fuse used in there, they've got the type model number of the fuse, uh, for example, and the uh, model number of various, uh, you know, the keypads, the plastic enclosures, the LCD windows. They've all been, um, all these components have been independently certified and tested so that makes the job of then uh, giving an overall UL or ETL uh, uh, acceptance for the product much easier because these components you can prove that they've all been independently uh, certified in their own right. And then they'll document where you can stick it, um, stick your logo that is, um, there it is, the Canadian and US uh, ETL Intertech logo, that's the certification uh, number down there, you can look that up and then they'll actually specify under, there you go, it was uh, UL, even though it's a UL uh, standard thing that they were testing against, it's tested by ETL. It's got nothing to do with UL, but it just happens to use their version of the uh, UL uh, standard there and the CSA. You pay your money and uh, they don't just rubber stamp things. Um, uh, in, in the case of uh, this particular multimeter, they came back, the test house, they, they won't just fail you. Typically, they'll come back and say, hey, Look, we look. It's even not passing uh, this particular test or whatever, or we think it's not going to pass this test based on our experience. And you might want to modify this. And hey, let's start again. So often there's a bit of back and forth there. That just allows you to fix things uh, properly uh, before they just you know you pay your ten thousand dollars or whatever, and they just go, sorry, it failed. Do it again. And then there's page six of eighty-five, and it just. <laughs> Either it's passed or not applicable, all these like separate independent tests that they actually do. This thing, this is why getting a product uh, UL or ETL uh, type approval testing can take months. It's just a very long process. Not only is there a long queue of companies waiting to have their products uh, tested, but just to test the one product takes a long time. But getting back to UL logos, it doesn't just end with like the C and US. There are marks for Europe as well. The D mark, D safety mark, the ENEC mark, um, then UL with EU below it. And there's a new UL certified logo. They're trying to sort of, uh, you know, transition over to sort of a new look uh, logo and things like that. You can get Canadian, US and EU listed under there. And uh, this new one actually has the... Uh, the qualification uh, number on the thing and then there's a ULGS mark which we'll have to get into and then there's marks for Asia as well um, look at this SNI ULID and there's the PSC you may have, might have uh, seen that on some uh, power supplies that's a Japanese uh, specific one S mark as well and like <laughs> It just goes on and on. Oh, no, we're not done yet. Latin America. Oh, nom. There's that nom, 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 nom. But UL and Intertech, uh, they aren't the only ones in town, of course. There's others like uh, TUV, for example. There we go. These TUV markings. We'll take a look at that. Uh, CSA, that's a Canadian uh, Standards Association. And uh, they will do uh, independent certification to the same standards yet again. And you can put their marking on and it's got the uh, ID numbers and stuff like that. So if we actually take a look at uh, TUV, they're actually a uh, German uh, company. So, you know, if you want to get it certified in Europe, that's why you notice that the UL one uh, had Canadian and US and EU. Well, if you want a specific uh, German one, the TUV is uh, the way to go, for example. Once again, they do all sorts of lab equipment, machinery, robotics, all sorts of anything. They'll test literally anything. And very often the uh, TUV mark here is next to the GS. So they call it like GS slash uh, TUV for Germany and EU market. And the CSA, the Canadian uh, Standards Association, that uh, CSA mark, once again, they'll do all your product testing and verifications. And that's why you end up with a whole bunch of these markings on the back of your product. Because, you know, reputable companies, in this case, this is a Dell, for example, they get these products, I think this is a monitor, and they get them certified and they want to sell them in all these different countries. They've got to meet various electrical and uh, safety and approval standards and a CE as all. Well. It's kind of the separate thing. But anyway, um, safety and certification standards in all these different countries. So they stamp, 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 stamp. But, you know, they don't just rubber stamp these things. They would have actually sent this particular monitor away to every single one of these groups and it probably took a couple of months 
there to at, at each one to get tested and i'm sure if you really wanted to audit uh dell you know you're a big client you can ask for the certification uh the testing documents for this particular monitor if you wanted to and here's where it gets a bit tricky in terms of uh, definitions. We've been looking at type approvals, that's your UL and your uh, TUV and all those sort of ones, technically called type approvals, but they're essentially certifications against a standard. And there's other certification marks like, uh, so the CCC one here with the registration number down below, that's actually, uh, that stands for the China Compulsory Certificate. And that's a, a like an in Chinese um, certification standard. So this monitor has been registered with that Chinese um, standards testing authority. And if you want to sell your product in Argentina, you need one of these Argentina Republic, or you may or may not, depending on uh, the local country standards. Um, this IRAM mark here, and we'll take a look at that. There you go, the um, Institute, I won't even try and pronounce that anyway, another certification type approval authority. And if you want this nom 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 mark down in the corner here and sell your product in Mexico and make it all official and certified, uh, type approved, um, nom is the norma official Mexicana. So it's the local Mexican type approval standard. And uh, Intertech will do this, TUV will uh, do this. And some other ones are just uh, certifications marks like the uh, CTIC here, which actually is an older Australian standard. They don't have that anymore. It's now called an RCM or a regulatory uh, compliance mark. And that's really not to do with, uh, in this particular case, any uh, of the safety certifications for the multimeter. Uh, for example, it's basically just uh, EMC uh, compliance. So basically uh, the same as the FCC. That's generally why they'll bunch them together like this. They'll have the uh, CE, which I've done the video on the FCC and the uh, regulatory compliance mark. So that's different. Those sort of certifications are different to the type approval safety standards that we're looking at here with the UL and etc. And there's just no shortage of uh, these sort of marks on all sorts of different products. Um, and like, you know, you can <laughs> go through all these until the cows come home. Suffice it to say that they're either a certification mark for uh, EMC and EMI uh, compliance, or they're a type approval regulatory safety mark uh, to ensure that the product is independently third party tested. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. I'll put some uh, links down below to all this uh, sort of stuff. If you're designing and selling a product um, that has any sort of safety requirements at all, I mean, you know, you're probably almost certainly going to have to meet uh, basic uh, compliance in terms of uh, EMC. So CE, FCC uh, and the CTIC and uh, regulatory compliance mark for sale in various countries and things like that. But then whether or not your product has to be uh, type approved to some sort of safety standard depends on what type of uh, product it is. And all of this testing can cost you know, tens of thousands of dollars and can take months, especially if you fail, you have to respin your boards, respin your product, do whatever. Um, you know, it can be an iterative uh, type of process. So um, generally you wanna talk to your uh, test house. You wanna find a test house that can do as many of these regulatory compliance mark uh, tests as possible. And often they'll do, okay, you just tell them, I want to sell it in all these countries and they'll advise you on which marks you need, which standards and type approvals and all that sort of stuff you need. And they'll generally work with you to finish off the product and get it all approved. But yeah, it takes a lot of time and money and you have to schedule that into the development of something like this multimedia, you have to go, well, look, it's gonna take, we can't ship this, it's gonna take two months to get that stamp on the back of it. That's just, you know, how long it takes. You can't ship it before that. So there you go. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. And subscribe over here, no, there, somewhere. And that little bell icon thing, click on that so you get notified. And also there's a new uh, community tab it used to be the discussion tab on my uh, channel and i'll link that in down below and uh, you can get updates and things like that especially on your mobile phone i'll post uh, like if i'm going live on my second channel or something like that i did that the other day and i posted that on there so everyone got notified of all that sort of jazz anyway hope you liked it catch you next time <laughs>